When The Witcher 3 received its next-gen update in December, that update brought a host of enhancements, including the addition of ray tracing, which really improved the game's visual presentation. However, the update also arrived with a lot of technical issues, specifically the bad implementation of DX12 and the poor CPU performance. Nevertheless, CD Projekt Red has been frequently updating the game over the past few months, and we are now at version 4.02. So today we will compare the initial launch of the next gen update with the latest version, highlighting the changes that have been made and the performance difference. So without any further ado, let's get going. Now if you remember in my optimization guide video for The Witcher 3, I mentioned that screen space reflection wasn't working as intended, SSR was missing and visually there was no difference between low and high. However, patch 4.01 has addressed this issue, and low now disable SSR and high enable it. But SSR is so heavy in this game, and using high costs around 22% compared to low. And in some scenes, as you can see here, I'm getting around 89 to 90 FPS. And if I set SSR to high, the FPS drops to 60, which is a 34% drop. Additionally, when using DX11, SSR is still not working. So it seems like SSR is bugged for now, and if you are having lower FPS with the new updates, I recommend lowering screen space reflection. Patch 4.01 also added a new performance mode for Ray Trace Global Illumination. And this is a great addition, given that RTGI was previously demanding on the GPU and the CPU. And this new performance mode reduced the range and accuracy of RTGI. And as a result, performance has lower coverage compared to quality as you can see here. And using performance RTGI at this scene boosts FPS by around 25% on the RTX 3060 Ti at native 1440p, and this is a nice improvement. Now moving forward to patch 4.02, this one restored Horizon Base Ambient Occlusion or HBAO+, which was removed when the next gen update released. And here even though HBAO Plus adds a dark halo around some objects, overall it looks a lot better compared to SSAO. And on the performance side there is around 1% between SSAO and HBAO Plus. 4.02 also promised better CPU core utilization in DX12. And here in Novigrad, which is a CPU limited place, if we compare 4.00, which is the launched version of the next gen update, and 4.02, we can see that overall CPU threads utilization is almost identical, but the performance on average is around 11% better with 4.02. And here is a comparison in a GPU limited scenario between 4.00 and 4.02, where the performance is almost identical. But what about DX11? Unfortunately, these new updates makes DX11 completely broken, resulting in noticeable stuttering as you can see here. and an expected drops in FPS like here in Novigrad. All in all, on one hand, these new updates have indeed brought improvements to various aspects of the game. CPU performance is now better in DX12. SSR is partially fixed, as for some reason it's so demanding and causes big FPS drops. Restoring HBAO Plus is great, and the new performance ray tracing is a welcome addition. However, on the other hand, the X11 is now unusable and completely broken, and the majority of improvements in these new updates primarily focus on enhancing the X12. So the best way to describe these new updates is two steps forward, one step backward. And with that, we arrive at the end. Thank you so much for watching and for your time. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If not, leave a dislike. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for any future videos. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next one.